All right, here we have a car radio that's been sent in for repair. And I'm gonna have to pr press pause on doing repairs right now. I've got so much stuff going on, I just don't have time. Um, but I got uh, two or three in the pipeline, maybe four, and I'll, I'll finish those up and then I get, get back into some TVs later as soon as it stops raining out here. But anyway, this is for a, uh, a Rambler as you can see there and on the back here it says 63 Rambler four door so maybe this came from a wrecking yard or a recycler or something like that and this was made by uh, Motorola and do we have a date here 1964 I don't see how you could have a 1964 radio for a 1963 car, but okay. So AM only. A little bit of an odd shape from the traditional car radios we're used to seeing these days. It's got three wires, I'm assuming speaker positive and ground and positive. All right, let's take a look at the inside of this, and I'll have to admit I already kind of inspected it so that I could find the SAMs. And uh, there's the filter capacitor right there, or maybe not filter, just electrolytic. Um, anyway, you can see that uh, maybe someone had started uh, to attempt to recap this thing. I, I don't know, there's, and this is not the problem. There's about an 80% chance that this set will not be corrected by replacing that capacitor. In fact, I can test that capacitor and we can see what the state is. I might do that right now. I checked every, all three sections and all three sections are perfect. Low ESR, in good shape. If we look at how this capacitor is used in this circuit, so we come in here from our accessory probably from the, the car. I think this car probably has a generator in it, so it's going to be noisy. Um, through a filter choke, on off switch, and then we got three stages of fil filtration and probably this one would probably also be considered bypass too because you're going to get some audio and you want to keep the audio out of the other sections. So this capacitor being good, and I will admit that I already bought two 470s and a 100 um, today. But again, this is not diagnosing the radio. I want to diagnose the radio. I want to see what's wrong with it. So let me try and figure out why we have four wires here and three sections of a filter capacitor. I'm a little bit confused. Um, this has created a bit of a mess, so let me look this over. All right, all the all the, the capacitors all hooked back up. I hope I got it right. I don't know. I was kind of looking at how this radio is made. Check out how those transistors are on those kind of weird standoff things. I don't think I've ever seen that before. And notice how there's alignment uh, inserts for the all the IF cans um, with it together. It's kind of interesting. Of course, this is the antenna tuner and that's got a slug at the back or a quarter inch you can turn. They're very nicely built. So, um, we're all hooked up here. Let's see what it does. And it is totally quiet. Let me let me check my connections real quick. You can hear when I connect that there is some noise. All right, boy, there's one hell of a clunk in here when you power this up. Listen to this damn thing. That's not coming out of the speaker. That's coming out of something in the radio. So we know we should have our voltages here on this capacitor. Let's do a little diagnosis and repair. 12.4, 10 point. Triangle, 10 point something. Square, 10 point 4, 12.4. 
and then 8.8 .8 on the one that's unmarked. Now if I hook this back up correctly, so here's the one with nothing. Am I doing this right? Okay, so here's the one with nothing, and we have zero volts here. Uh, here is triangle, and we have zero volts there, and here is square, and we have we have 11.5 volts on square, and what was square over here? Square was 12.4, and then we have a 330 ohm resistor here, and from the 330 ohm resistor we go to triangle, and what I mean by triangle is if you can see right there, there's a little tiny triangle, that corresponds to the little triangle right there and square. So we have a 330 ohm to triangle, and we have no power on triangle. Now let's take a look at that 330. So that's R32, and interestingly enough, it shows R32 bridged across to the two pins on, uh, it would be from square to triangle actually tacked onto the back of the capacitor. So did that, is that in the box here? Uh, let me look. No, I, I am not finding that resistor anywhere, so I need to find a 330 ohm uh, around here, and let's see if that wakes it up. I don't know what is going on with this thing. Okay, all I had handy was 100 ohm, that's kind of low. But the whole point of this network anyway is to filter out noise and, you know, we're not really generating any noise with this little gel cell here. So let's check our voltages again. So we should have about 12 on square. We should have about a volt left, less on uh, rectangle. And we should have a little bit less than that, around 8.8 .8 volts on no marking. So now we got all our voltages there and I think we're still dead. Okay, the one difference I do notice now with the resistor in place is I have static. So you can hear that I have some activity now on the volume control. And um, I clipped this wire on the antenna and here you really shouldn't need an antenna. Definitely not to get KNX. You shouldn't need anything. Just some type of detector and a wire. So we're still dead. So <clears throat> assuming, I'm going to assume that I'm back to the position that it was before the capacitor was just automatically accused of being the problem because the internet tells me that the capacitors are the problem with everything. So Got to change a capacitor, it'll fix it every time. I saw it on the internet, it's got to be true. I got a 330 ohm in there, which is the correct resistor. So now we can go ahead and try and properly diagnose this. I'm assuming that I got everything uh, hooked up correctly. It appears that way. I guess I could, uh, let's see, it appears that when I Take and touch the center of the volume control. You get a little noise there, and I might not get a whole bunch because I only have two stages of amplification here. It's interesting, they call these one microfarad, and I think they're disc capacitors. This thing has a whole bunch of one microfarad discs. Well, with the volume all the way up, I can hear a tad bit of hiss there. And just with an antenna on it, I'm getting nothing at all. So maybe the oscillator's not running. These things use those weird tuned, um, the slugs that move in and up and down through these cores. So these are, these car radios are not capacitor tuned, they're slug tuned. Uh, so, it's a little bit different, not something I'm really used to. 
But I think we can diagnose this. This is uses the 262, 262 kilohertz IF. So, uh, yeah. Let me think about how to do this. It's only got one IF stage. So two, well, it appears two of the three transistors are working, two of the three stages. So we got RF converter and IF. There's probably people watching this who are much more proficient at working on car radios than I am. This is not really my forte, although we will fix anything here. Okay, we're inside. Can you tell by the lighting overload? Is the camera focusing? So you see that right there, flag five, coming out of the center tap of that IF transformer, you know, the base of the IF amp. So I'm feeding into flag five there. 262 kilohertz through a 0.0015. That value doesn't matter, just want to isolate it. And I'm at negative uh, 57. So that seems pretty relevant. I think that uh, the IF amp is working. Uh, so it's probably oscillators not running. This has a um, an RF amp as most of these cars do, car radios do. And I, st I still think it would get KNX if the RF amp was dead. I mean, it just, you, unless you lived here, you have no idea how strong that station is. It's a few miles away and it's 50, kilo, 50 kilowatts all the time it's not it's a clear channel so it can doesn't have to reduce at night now this is kind of interesting and I, I've never seen a circuit board you can see how they have collector base and emitter actually engraved you can see their collector emitter actually engraved into the uh, um, etched into the copper so anyway, we take our signal generator, and I've I had to crank the power up quite a bit, but this is on the other side of the IF transformer. So I was in here. This is the base of the IF. Then this is the other side of the transformer. So this is the collector of the um, converter. And then we come over here to the... Uh, the base, let me see, was it? I think it was this one. And there's just nothing. There's just nothing getting through this transistor. So, I, I gotta see what's going on here. Let me verify. Okay, this right here is the base for sure. And there is nothing getting through that transistor. Now I'm not sure. I would think it. I would think something would get through there. I understand that it's not. Uh, that it's not an IF. Uh, I mean, not that one. This one here. I understand that it's a converter, not a. Um, uh, not an IF amp. But you would think, because I'm dumping it on the collector there, you can barely hear it, but. You'd think something would get through there from the base. So I'm looking at you, converter. Well, this looks suspicious already. So we go to our emitter. We're at 9.68. We go to our base. We're at 9.02. Uh, that's a difference of 0.6... 0.66... The junction of a germanium transistor is about 0.2, so that's 400 millivolts too high. And if you look at here, you can see 0.8 and 0.6, that's 200 millivolts. So why this is showing uh, 400 millivolts over, it's showing 0.6, that's... 0.6 is what the junction of a silicon transistor should be, not a germanium. So why this is showing uh, so much, again, 0.68 and 
9.68 and basically 9 so almost 700 millivolts drop across the junction of that transistor that is wrong I'm trying to figure out how to deal with this contraption right here I think this is a four pin transistor the case being ground This Moana soundtrack up for grabs, and where are you coming from? Uh, from my friend's house. Oh, fun! Uh, I heard that you're a big fan of those movie Moana as well, right? Yes. And you've been wanting the soundtrack for a while? Yes. Okay, well. You want the Patriots there, right? Connecticut. Richard Adams. And Chivas va a salir de ese. Por el crédito ni se preocupe. Never gonna forget. Well, God bless you, Nanette, and God bless Shane, and God bless... Assistance of counsel for his defense. Where does this tourist come from? <laughs> right here in Southern California. Now, when you... <laughs> Forbes recently named our financial advisory firm, Money Matters, one hotel and a $500 gift card, all in... Alright. To let people know you support Catholic Radio, we also hear stories of how people discover Immaculate Heart Radio for Okay, so what I did is I just took a dental pick and I just heated this thing up and popped two of the leads out. I popped the base and the collector out, I think. This is a Russian Germanium MP16. This is a multi-purpose mill spec. See, it's got the little triangle on it there. That means it's mill spec. And yes, I should put a as suggested, I should make this YouTube.com forward slash or however it is, Shango066, because this is my video. And you're watching me. You're not watching ChinaBot 1206. You're watching me. And it should be on my channel. Mine. All mine. Give me. Give me the credit I am due. For I am awesome. That's going, to send a, that's going to send a big message to a lot of people in this country that you don't believe he's a legitimate president. I think there was a conspiracy on the part of the Russians and others that helped him get elected. That's not right. That's not fair. That's not the open democratic process. Yes. Yes, and the Russians, it's a conspiracy that this Russian transistor has made this old, dead, worthless radio work again. That's a conspiracy, too. Um, this is a GT313B UHF transistor, and it's a much higher frequency than the MP20. And I notice with this one that the sensitivity is much better at the top of the band, and... Uh, it kind of went dead at the top of the band before. This election has been certified as of last week. Dump yeah, yeah, so just get over it and deal with it. Yo quiero que Dios... So you can hear there's a lot more noise. Even some DX starting to come in. 
So I like this transistor a lot better. It's just going to be about figuring out how to get it in there. And I might not even pull the circuit board out. I might just try and tack it in from here if I can. Try. I got this thing in here and it's actually soldered in here really well. I know it doesn't look that great. But um, I, I chose not to pull this apart at the risk of damaging something. I didn't want to take that risk when I could get it in right there. Uh, also, this has been cleaned up and our new capacitors have already been installed. A couple of them here and a couple of them on the other side. Um, I'm considering doing an alignment. Maybe I should put a quick alignment on it because this transistor is probably has a different internal capacitance as the factory one which was a 2SA72 I believe it was Japanese transistor. Uh, so we'll maybe take a look at the alignment real quick and then we'll put it back together and do our channel sweep. It is picking up KNX with no antenna. We'll also have snow for our mountains. See, you know, this is what I would expect um, it to get KNX with no antenna. So yeah, let's um, take a quick peek at the 262 kilohertz alignment and then we'll go from there. I, I don't think it'll be far off, but I should still check it. Alright, this is the same as any AM radio. Got AM modulation, just instead of 455 we're on 262 and then cr I'm using my roll of wire. Just, I'll you know, cut it out. It's just sitting there radiating kind of into the front end of the thing. And, um, I just. Ooh, that one came up a little bit. So, loving God with my whole heart and searching... Uh, we can... Okay, so let's do a channel sweep here, and uh, for those of you who have no idea how these work, I'll show you because they're very cool. It's like mechanical station presets. Um, so we'll, we're down at the bottom. I have about, oh, I don't know, I have the, the antenna is just, uh, I have the antenna clipped onto my uh soldering iron lead here so I don't know what that is three feet or something like that so here we go Still a bit. So I, I guess you're, sure. you're, I mean you don't you don't want to have you don't want to have that many people don't get it I'll give you the second one very quickly because you're very intelligent you the words you used to describe I told you not to call okay. home okay he's 74 years old he was a joke and it was a funny joke, and we asked everybody... In the okay, room, did anybody have so let's say we want to set a station here. This is KFI. So what we do is pull this up. Well, we said, well, certain people here can say certain things and never get in trouble for it. I still don't think there's any... And then I pull said, it down. And they said to me, well, you're under the sports center... So... So then I said, so if I was doing my radio, then it would be okay go in anymore because I know better what do you say I was, when I get older, all my fears are catch more the Dr. Bob Martin show Sunday mornings from 1 to 4 a.m. from warts to wrinkles anxiety to arthritis and much more Sunday mornings starting at 1 a.m. I'll just say it. on talk radio 790 KABC <laughs> Alright, let's get right back to work with your telephone. 
to grow. We feed and sober and can't smile in church, that kind of thing. Fabulous results. Call 310 Kitchen. That's the CGN or log on to 310kitchen.com. Larry, why'd you make so that's KNX. So I'll set a preset to KNX. January clearance sale. What is being four miles? Plus, with your good credit, pay 0% financing for 12 months with your minimum monthly payment and get free delivery. I can't feel my fingers, my toes, and soon I won't feel anything because you're killing me, Larry. Save on over 20,000 mattresses, box springs, and adjustable beds during Sit and Sleep's January clearance sale. Sit and Sleep will beat anyone's advertised price or your mattress is free. Enhanced. Universe. So it works good. I'm, I'm, my voltage is getting a little bit low because this thing has a. These things are really inefficient. I don't know what this thing draws. Just yeah, probably 250 milliamps just idling. I mean, they're these things are power hungry. They didn't. Uh, the way the output works there, the way they have that biased and driven, they didn't care about. Um, wasting batteries because it's in a car you have basically an infinite supply of current it's not like you know 4d cells or whatever so i uh, hope you enjoyed it uh more to come later hopefully we'll put the back back on this oh one other note to the owner of this which is there is a this right here that sticks out next to the antenna jack. That is an antenna trimmer. I'll include the SAMs that I got for this, which should explain how to adjust that. Let me see if I can find out real quick. I think you just put it at a station towards the top of the band and peak it. Okay, what it's saying to do is this adjustment here, and then there's two variable caps right there that are accessed through this hole right here in the front. So what it's saying to do is use a signal generator uh, at 1615 kilohertz, so right at the top of the band. So what I would do is try and find a station, when you get this thing back in the car, but not totally, try and find a station up around the top uh, and then peak this for sure, adjust this and peak, peak it for loudness. And that should be about it. I think these more or less adjust the positioning of the station uh, in relationship to this number scale. And that, that's not really that important. Your main thing is sensitivity. It's really close right now.